So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a box score using Huddle Assist data. So I think the first question to ask would be, why make a box score? Especially when you're in the elite space, you're probably already going to have that box, box score data, makes and misses, rebounds, turnovers, points from the scorers table or some sort of third party um, provider. The reason I would say to make a box score on sports code is that you can now attach that statistical output to video. So when your coaches want to quickly review a player's makes or misses, rebounds, turnovers, and points, they just have to press the button and they'll get that immediate feedback. So before we get into the actual scripting of this box score, there's a couple of things I want to point out. The first is that I've given this name here on the y-axis, a button ID. Now this button ID is going to be really important because we're going to reference that later in our scripts. And the reason you would give this, uh, this player a button ID is because you might have different players playing different games. So if you need to change the players on the y-axis from one game to another because of injuries or whatever, then you don't have to update the scripting in your, um, your outputs. You just have to change the name on this player on the y-axis and the scripting will automatically update. And we'll get into why that is soon. So the first that we're going to do is field goal attempts. Now again, I'm doing this from a huddle assist timeline. So the syntax and the verbiage that I'm going to be using is based on that. However, your label names, your code button names, your syntax might be a little bit different. So you're going to make sure you update that for whatever scripting I'm about to show you. So field goal attempts. The first line of script I'm going to do is a variable. I'm going to say button name player 01. So I'm referencing the button ID of this player on the y-axis. So now whenever I change the name of this button, this scripting is not going to reference the actual name of the button, but instead the button ID. So the scripting can stay consistent without having to manually change it when another player comes into that slot. So I'm going to go show count and then in brackets I'm going to put my labels. I'm going to put label minus three or label plus three or label minus two or label plus two where row equals player. So I'm referencing the player from this variable button ID player 01 which is the name in our y-axis slot. Then if I want to get the movie there's a couple of things I need to make sure of as well. On this first tab, I need to make sure that my button type is action, and then the action type is make movie. I then need to come back here, and I just have to copy the script, copy it down, and remove the word count. Because it's the exact same script, we're showing some sort of label and some sort of row, except we're not longer counting it, we're just showing it. So now when I go execute, we'll have eight field goal attempts from this player. Field goal makes, we're going to do the exact same thing, except just remove a couple of labels. You'll hear me say this again and again. The nice thing about scripting is that once you do something once, you don't usually have to do it again. You just have to update a couple of things. So field goal makes, we just have to get rid of the minus three, the minus two, and then copy this back down and remove the word count. And now we have our field goal makes. So eight attempts and three makes. But now we get into the percentage, and here we need to do a little bit more scripting. So I'm going to copy our attempts, and instead of just showing the total amount of attempts, I'm going to turn this into a variable. So dollar sign total equals count. Your variables don't actually matter what their names are. I always just name my variables something self-explanatory to what they're actually representing. So the total amount of shots, so the variable name total makes sense. Then I'm going to come here and go mate, and I'm just going to copy the scripting again from here. Again, once you do, once you do the scripting once, you don't have to do it again. So now I've got a variable for my made shots, and now here comes the scripting. So for a percentage script, there's essentially three different equations that we need to, to execute. The first equation is dividing the made by the total. We then need to divide that number by 100, sorry, multiply that number by 100. And then we need to round that number down to a suitable amount of decimal points. Because say if this player made 33% of their shots, we don't want it to be 
forever, we need to reduce the amount of decimal points to a number that's a little bit more appropriate. So show round, and for those three equations, I'm gonna put three parentheses. I'm gonna put my made divided by total. Now that's my first equation, so I can close the first parentheses. The second equation is multiplying it by 100. I can close that parentheses. And then I'm gonna put comma one. And that's gonna reduce my amount of decimal points to just one decimal point. So in the example I described, described earlier, it would be 33.3. No more threes after that. Close that parentheses. And now the last step of this percentage script is because currently it's just a number. It doesn't actually know it's a percentage. So we need to manually add that percentage sign. So we've got 37.5%. Now that scripting I did for field goals will be the exact same for two point attempts, two point makes, two point percentage, and then same for the threes. All you're gonna be doing is removing the threes or the twos, depending on what shot that you're representing. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to skip to the end and do turnovers. I'm gonna take the first line of script again, player, battle name, player I one. And I'm gonna do show count turnover where row equals player. Copy that, come down, remove the word count, and that's all we need to do. We have four turnovers. The next one I'm gonna do is offensive rebound. This one, because if we actually look at the scripting or the data from this timeline, and we look at how these huddle assist games are coded, you'll see here that the fouls are called defensive and offensive fouls, but the rebounds are also called defensive and offensive rebounds. So we have two labels of the exact same name, defensive, defensive, offensive, offensive. So we actually need to make sure that we put the group name in our line of script, just so that we know we're pulling the correct stat. So we're gonna do rebounds, offensive rebounds, come to offensive rebounds. I'm gonna use that same first line of script. There we go, come down. We go show, count, and then in quotation marks, I'm gonna put rebounds. I'm then gonna put a full stop, and then I'm gonna put in quotation marks again, offensive. So that first quotation mark is put, uh, my first my first name inside those first quotation marks is the name of the group, full stop, and then name of the label in the second set of quotation marks. And then the same as the rest where row equals um, player. So one offensive rebound. Copy and paste that down, remove the word count, and now we have our video. Copy this whole thing again for defensive rebounds, change offensive to defensive, and now we have our defensive rebounds. Total rebounds, copy that over, come to total rebounds. Again, put this in a variable, O-R-E-B, make it self-explanatory, make it offensive, copy that down, make it defensive rebounds, and then we just need to add them together. Show offensive rebound plus defensive rebound we have two total rebounds. The last one I'll show you is points. So again, let's get, take our player variable and we'll go two and we'll go uh, count plus two where row equals and then we'll put player. And then how much is two points worth? It's worth two points. So we're gonna multiply that by two Come down for three, change that to three, change that to three as well, because how many are three points worth? They're worth three. And then again, if we look at our matrix to see what the names of our free throws are, the names of our free throws are just called plus and then capitals FT. So I'm gonna come back here and go free throw equals count in quotation marks plus free throw where row equals player, and because a free throw is worth one point, we don't need to multiply it by anything. Because then we just need to add all three of these things together. Multiply it together, there we go, not multiply, add these things together, and then we'll have our points. So 11 points for our player. 
Now the last thing I'm going to show you is that once you've done the scripting for one line of the box score, you don't actually need to do the scripting again. And again, this is why I keep harping on is once you've done the scripting once, you don't need to do it again. So I'm just going to show you a really quick process to get this from the first row of players, the first row of stats to the second row of stats. So this player is called player01, that's what his button ID was. But if I say copy this down and change this to player02, you'll notice now that all the scripting, all the scripting needs to change now from each one of these lines of script is player01 to player02, because that's the only thing differentiating this first row to the second row. So what we can do is just copy this entire row. We're going to open a new code window. I'm going to paste this row into this code window. I'm then going to go Command F to open the find window. I'm going to go find and replace. And I'm going to find player01 with player02. Make sure my code window is selected. Find is my new fake code window. Replace, continue. And now in my code window, I can copy this back and now we have player02. Player02. So then when I want to do player03, I can come back to my dummy code window, find and replace, swap player02 now with player03. And I just have to repeat this process for as many players that I want in my box score. But I don't actually have to script it out again, I just have to change that one number from 1 to 2 to 3. So that's how you script a box score in Huddle Sports Code, and that's how you quickly make the box score from one row to another without having to redo all the scripting. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that is helpful.